Hi dear customer, welcome. Here's Damien Django from ddsalesboost.com. Welcome to my weekly podcast where I provide value for you so you can improve in your sales skills and you can become the expert uh, considered as such from every prospect you will call in the future. Today I will be speaking about strategies when calling a decision maker and speaking to his personal assistant. So many of my trainer friends refer to personal assistants, assistants of decision makers as gatekeepers. They even use much uh, more drastic and negative language about these individuals. So from now on, I would advise you that you forget about this negative labeling of a personal assistant of a decision maker. There will be many, many situations where you will have to rely on the help of the personal assistant and the personal assistant will become the decision maker about the making of your next appointment with the person who you want to speak. So from now on, I would advise you when thinking and speaking about uh, personal assistance of decision makers to leave out such negative labels because it's creating a negative bias which will not help you to work with these people together. I will explain you this in a minute. But before I come to this uh, topic, why you shouldn't label a decision maker gatekeeper or even worse, I would like to explain you my approach, how I approach and decision maker in a bigger organization. So regardless if this is an enterprise organization or a mid-sized company, I would always go from the top to the bottom. So my rule is that I don't spend too much time on the research on the decision maker because specifically when I have doubts about it, who I have to speak to. One of the amazing sources you can use when looking for the right decision makers is the imprint of the company which is giving out and providing you the name of the CEO specifically in Germany it's the case but many times you know the CEO also from press reports and from news or from other sources so let me explain it to you a little bit in a more detail you always want to speak in the first place with someone who makes the budget instead of someone who is just an assigned stakeholder of a certain amount of a budget because this makes a big difference. <clears throat> this is why I strongly suggest that you work that way, that you always start from the top and you work your way down only if it's necessary instead of working your way up from the middle management up to the top. But let me go back to, this, to the conversation with the CEO personal assistant. I will specifically refer to the conversation with the CEO assistant, <clears throat> uh, but this counts also to other assistants of major decision makers like the CMO, CEO and CTO or many other C-level representatives. Obviously the CEO is the most important one and this is the person who you will obviously see most of the time in the imprint of the organization. When speaking to this, uh, the, to this assistant, you must assume that it will be quite difficult to get through to the decision maker straight away because he just might be not there at the time when you call. This is actually 90%, the 90% of times you are calling a personal assistant, you will be put through by the switchboard to the personal assistant of the CEO, that the CEO will be engaged in some other activities like a meeting, like a Skype call, or he will just be not avail available to speak to you. And because of that, you need to create rapport with his personal assistant. And this is why I explained at the very, very beginning that it's really, very really not very clever and it's made by many, many other trainers, top trainers, uh, they make this mistake that they assume or they label the personal assistant as a gatekeeper on the, or they give the personal assistant even worse labels than that. This creates a certain level of suspicion 
and also lack a lack of trust, which is really preventing to create rapport, which we will need when you will ask the PA for her help in order to create an appointment for you with the CEO or another major decision maker. So <clears throat> from my perspective, there is one strategy which really, really helped a lot. So there are actually two suggested ways how to do it. So the second best way how to do it is suggested by those people who think that the personal assistant is anyway advised, and this is somehow true, to sort out the salespeople from the calling channel and who are advised to, to tell you to leave when they realize that you want to sell something. So the second best way uh, explained by many other top salespeople, like for example, John Belfort, is just to do as you would be like a good friend and you just would like, would, would know the name of the, of the decision maker. Like this strategy works is that you just, after being connected from the switchboard to the personal assistant, that you just say uh, something to the personal assistant like that. Oh, hello, Damien speaking here. Is John there? And then you wait. And there is this game that uh, you shouldn't uh, say anything until the other, other person, like the personal assistant, speaks. And uh, then she will say then yes or not. And if she say yes, and, and who are you? Then you say like just your, your, your first name, like Damien. Um, and can you put me through, please? And that's it. So it's a strategy which can work. But this strategy can work only then when the decision maker is really in the office. But in many, many cases, as I explained before, the decision maker is not even there when you call because you are, it's a cold call. This is what I'm speaking about here. So when you call, you can even, as, even assume in 95% of the cases that you will be not able to speak with the decision make, maker straight away. So you need to become friend with the PA. So the PA becomes the decision maker about your appointment. And this is one of the reasons why you want to really think about her as uh, positively as you can, because you need really to, to transition this positive energy to her and to make her feel important in order to make her help, help, help you to make this appointment with the decision maker. And this worked for me many, many times. So let me explain you a little bit the strategy which I follow without putting the other a strategy down. It might work. It, it might be even a great strategy, specifically when you know that the decision maker is there in certain times. And I advise you to just try out whatever works for you uh, as well. Uh, but I wanted to show you like a strategy which will work when you just assume that the decision maker might be not there. So you just call and then you say, hello, here is Damien from ddsalesboost.com. Good afternoon or good morning, whatever it is. When the PA then, well then you let, and, and then you let just the PA uh, respond. Why? Because you instantly create a discussion with her. So you make her engaged. And this is one of the most important rules in the uh, cold calling school that you really need to speak less than your customer. And this starts instantly with the uh, introduction. Also, when you say hello, he is Damien speaking from ddsalesboost.com, it creates somehow like a familiarity. So, so you can say, oh, okay, Sandy, am I assuming right that uh, John is not there at the moment and I, you will be not able to put me through now? And this is something which uh, the personal uh, assistant actually not, doesn't expect, but this is actually what is happening, going on right now in many case, cases. I think that approximately 95% of the cases you'll be calling when the CEO can't speak at the moment. So in that case, you just ask then the personal assistant for help. So you just say then, okay, I understand Sandy. In that case, I really, really need your help. Would it be okay to ask? And then she will respond. She will be asking you, she will be asking you, what do you want? She says, ah, depends what you want. What is, the re is, is it regarding? This happened many, many times. And you then just respond, oh, thanks, Sandy, for asking. It is about John's decision about his IT infrastructure, specifically the continuous deployment of containers in your IT environment. What would be the best time and date 
to speak to him, it usually takes only two minutes to figure out what he wants to decide about. This is actually how you start the conversation with the PA and how you engage her in order to find out about vacancies and availabilities of the decision makers in his calendar, because you just ask about the next possible time. And sometimes the PA will be a little bit resilient. She will, say, she will be saying, oh no, this is not how we are going on. It's not our procedure. We don't give away any appointments. Uh, it's usually that you have to write an email. Then you can just completely act surprised. Please be aware that before you have suggested, you have spoken as, about John as someone you possibly know. This is what you have suggested with your previous conversation. So sh the personal assistant right now, she can't be sure about if you know the decision maker or not, and you've done everything right. She might assume even that you know him. And this worked also many times that because you have been straight away quite uh, straight to the point and you, 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 you spoke about John as someone who you know, at least you made this impression that she will assume that you are someone who has the authority to make the appointment with her. So then she will discuss with you the, the uh, calendar and in some cases she will not. She will then say that's not the procedure how we move on and then you can say okay I understand so next week is eventually not that good. I understand John is very busy so if this is not a fit this week then maybe it's the next week. So you're engaging her a little bit more about looking into the calendar of her uh, boss and she will then eventually find a date for you and put in an appointment, which happened many, many times for me. Um, but still, even if she doesn't want to do it, even if you don't get your appointment set up that way, then uh, you still are engaging her in a conversation because every time when you speak about the availability of the decision maker, uh, the personal assistant will respond and you will get into a conversation with her. Many times I have got, I've got the response that the, that the personal assistant told me it might be not him who is really responsible for this topic. This might be someone else. Let me figure out who is the right responsible person you need to speak to and please uh, let's schedule another call. So this is how I managed many times in the past and you can manage many times in the future the way to find out actually the right responsible representative with the help of the um, personal assistant. This is what happened for me many times speaking to large organizations where the CEO, PA of the CEO many times took time, like for example one week, two week, uh, two weeks time to find the right responsible, well then she came back to me or I called her back and she was giving me the, the name of the right responsible and not only then, this person has been already advised and assigned to speak with me from the office of the CEO and with such a recommendation you will have your pre-discovery conversation. So this is just in one example how it's really important for you to not make negative assumptions of the, about PAs, personal assistants of C-level C decision makers. You really need to understand that these are normal people even more. They have the power to decide about the appointment with the person you want to speak to, or they have the power to engage to find out the responsible person who is the, the person you want to speak to. Another scenario is that actually you don't expect John to be there and he is actually there and then you engage with the PA actually saying okay Sandy uh, am I assuming actually right that John is not there at the moment and that you will be not able to connect me through and then Sandy saying surprisingly no no he is there so what you actually do then is very simple and you do it in a very certain way you just say Oh, Sandy, that's great. Then please put me through to John and tell him that Damien from ddsaysboost.com is calling. Thank you. And that's it. So what you do then, what is actually happening then, is, is that you are really highlighting the fact that you're already familiar with John. Because when you're saying, okay, that's great, 
then please connect me through and you do it with certainty and then you tell and tell him that Damien from ddsalesboost.com is calling you are actually suggesting to the PA that you know John and that John specifically that John knows you and this is important for her. In many cases when you do it in the right way with this right posture and with the right expression of your voice with certainty you will be put through. Just try this. Summarizing I wanted to, to, to ask you to do the following. Please don't do any negative assumptions about the PAs. They finally decide about making the appointment for you with the decision maker or with someone else who is designed. Engage with the PA. Engage like you would engage with the decision maker. Let her look up the calendar of the decision maker and let her give you the suggestion how she wants to help you in order to go to your next step. And, and last but not least, if you surprisingly are in the position that you have done the wrong assumption, assuming that the decision maker is not there, but he's not there, just create the imagination of familiarity my more time and tell, okay, that's amazing. Then Sandy, please put me through and tell John that Damien from ddsaysboost.com is calling. Thank you. And this thank you will give you like an, it's just like a cut of the inner monologue of the uh, PA. And many, many times in the third of the cases or even more, she will put you through. With that said, thank you very much for your attention. Speak soon and have a great time. Eh? Last but not least, please subscribe. Hit the notification button in order to be informed about future content. And speak soon next time. See you soon, guys.